Hi everybody. We are in a um, book of Daniel, chapter five. We continue um, studying from book of Daniel, and the subtitle is the writing on the wall. All right, let's get started here. Um, king Belshazzar. We see that the name of the king changed as uh, Nebuchadnezzar in the previous chapter. He acknowledged who God is and gave praise and honor. So he turned around. He's pretty much um, sorting out with God. So, um, But now, um, the successor to the throne, either he died and God, God uh, wanted him to know who he was through Daniel. And to, I would say through Daniel prayers. So we have King Belshazzar gave a great banquet for thousand of his nobles and drank wine with them. Okay, you know what wine makes people, uh, you know, um, don't think straight anymore. Thousands of people, nobles, you know, like a um, royal, you know, nobles, like they were like high rank. Um, verse 2, while Belshazzar was drinking his wine, he gave orders to bring in the gold and silver goblets that Nebuchadnezzar, his father, um, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem so that the king and his nobles, his wives and his concubines might drink from them. Wow, that's a big deal. So this is a temple of God, right? But I say when uh, uh, Belshazzar to see who he is and what he does, uh, he step on the line step over the line, I would say. And um, while he was drinking wine, he says, oh, yeah, I have better things than this. Uh, you know, I know who I am. Um, to see, like, this is this is pride, guys, again. Um, or the order, by his orders, um, those, the gold and silver that actually Jewish in the temple the priest will make offerings. We have a Passover. We drink from them. Um, we uh, they have like specific uh, tradition um, in from the Old Testament. They were very sacred. I would say um, that is in, in the first chapter when we start. I says like pay attention to that. Um, we're thinking of in the temp from the Temple of Jerusalem when he. Uh, besieged the city and um, he he got all these uh, um, silver and gold uh, vessels from the temple and he brought it with him. He never touched them though. He just got them to have them just to have, you know, like he thought it was something very valuable to Jewish people. That's why he got it. But his son that he knew who what happened to his father and how he was, you know, even he was uh, ended ended as an animal um, in the field. He knew what happened to his father and he turned to God and um, told everybody um, his son was um, not um, listening to what the father said to him. Uh, looks like it because it's def like uh, when you go in the temple, you defile the temple with uh, things. But now just it took it and got the, those to drink with who? Okay, let's see who, who they want to drink with. Uh, that the king and his nobles, his wife and his what? Concubines might drink from them. Concubines, uh, their lovers. Wives and their lovers, um, they were invited as well. 
and which is uh, illegal, you know, and it says wives and concubines, it's more il illegal to have them, but anyway, um, they drink from them. So it's not like a uh, people of God will drink it, will be like any other people, they have no value of um, the vessels of uh, in the, from the temple of God. So because he ordered them, they brought them, so in verse 3, so they brought in the gold, uh, in the gold goblets and then had been taken from the temple of God uh, in Jerusalem and the king and his nobles, his wife and his concubine drank from them. Wow. Ooh, I don't want to be in their skin, really. It's, I say, sacred from the temple, but they didn't value them. As they drink the wine, they praise, not much worse. It gets much worse, guys. It gets much worse here. As that's why I've highlighted, I underline it. As they drink the wine, they praised the gods of gold, silver, or bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Wow. Um, they praise their idols. Um the gods that cannot talk, cannot move, they are like made of human hands, and they thought, they said that they are the gods, and let's praise them with these uh, vessels that got from Jerusalem. Wow, I can I can see, as soon as they did that, a sentence came over, the, over who gave the orders, the other ones they were invited, so they have no idea, but this one uh, had no excuse, um, uh, Belshazzar, you know, excuse because he saw his father, he witnessed what happened, so you know, excuse what uh, to do all this. Um, verse 5 Suddenly, the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall near the lampstand in the royal palace, like an in. in Invisible, you know, like it's just it's just a hand, invisible person, but the hand was showing. The king watched the hand, even though he was all with um, the wine got in to his brain. Um, the king watched the hand as it wrote. Uh, so he couldn't see nobody, just the hand coming from nowhere. And I assume probably was a big hand of God. His face, whose face was the king's face, turned pale and he was so frightened that his legs became weak and his knees were knocking. He was, I would say, trembling, shaking in terror, frightened, um, in fear all of a sudden, you know. When that happens, we know a sentence was placed over his head uh, when he has that fear. The fear came, uh, the sentence was placed over his head. Um, like his father, when he came, like he was in fear, he, he had a vision and a, a dream, he's in fear, and was frightened and fearful, and like uh, afraid that something will happen. They already, they have that sense, people they have that uh, sense, we are like human, that something is going to happen. And exactly what is in this uh, passage here, uh, verse 7, the king summoned the enchanters, the astrologers again, and the diviners, all these like uh, people that um, they do with more deal with witchcraft than anything else. Then he said to these wise men of Babylon, whoever reads this writing and tells me what it means will be clothed in purple and have a gold chain placed around his neck and he will be made the third highest ruler in the kingdom. All right, the third, so you'll be first, be, I don't know who was the second, and the third will be that person. It's how much he want to know what is written, because why he's so scared, okay? Verse 8, then all the king's wise uh, men came in, but they could not read the writing or tell the king what it meant. <laughs> I'm just thinking probably it was written in Hebrew. Could be, and these people were not as knowledgeable as Daniel and the other three, now uh, we see they, they were studying Babylonian um, culture and uh, language and everything else, but these people would not know Hebrew. So Kim Beshazzar became, so it says they would not be able, could not read the writing or tell the king what it meant. 
So King Belshazzar became even more terrified and his face grew more pale. His nobles were baffled. Okay, now we have a situation. The queen, and it could be, the translation is like the mother of the queen, which is much older, heard the voices of the king and his nobles came into the banquet hall. Uh, not all the time uh, the wife or the family of um, the wife were invited. This he did with the nobles and um, with their wives and concubines, but I don't think the queen was invited or she didn't want to be a part of it. But the translation it says, when it says the queen is, is like uh, the mother of the queen heard and it says, and it came into, came into the banquet hall, you know, when came into the, just on the hall, they want to get in. And I says, she, they were not invited the way I can see it, which is probably for the best, I'm telling you. Um, May the king live forever, she said. Don't be alarmed, don't look so pale. There is a man in your... Going, in your kingdom, who has the spirit of the holy gods in him? Again, this is like, don't say the holy God, like the God of Israel. This is holy gods. All right, so re, uh, that makes a reminder to the, the king. In the time of your father, he was found. Um, so it has to be the mother of the queen because she knows more about it. And she has probably more wisdom than anybody else uh, that rank um, as a woman. He was found to have insight and intelligence and wisdom like that of the gods. So, your father, King Nebuchadnezzar, appointed him chief of the magicians, enchanters, astrologers, and diviners. Um, he, uh, he did this because Daniel, whom the king called Belshazzar, he is a B Babylonian name, was found to have, listen to this, a keen mind and knowledge and understanding and also the ability to interpret dreams, explain riddles and solve difficult problems. Um, call for Daniel and he will tell you what the writing means. All right, so this uh, woman cannot approach the banquet. She's on the hall and tells, gives a message to the, to the king that she knows somebody in the kingdom, and his name is Daniel. I think the king didn't know about him yet. I think he knew, but usually they call their, um, once they, they believe they can solve the problems, but none of them could. Verse 13, so Daniel was brought before the king and the king said to him, are you Daniel, one of the exiles my father, the king brought from Judah? I have heard that the spirit of God is in you, that you have inside intelligence and outstanding wisdom. The wise men and enchanters were brought before me to read the writing and tell me what it means, but I could not explain it. Now I have heard that you are able to give interpretation and to solve difficult problems. If you can read this and tell me what it means, you will be clothed in purple. Purple is uh, uh, more royal clothing. And I want to tell like you will be like, um, you'll be um, part of the royal, you know. Um, when they when they dress them in purple, they, they like belong to the royal family. And have a gold chain placed around your neck and you will be made the third highest ruler in the kingdom. All right, we are in verse 17. Then Daniel answered the king, you may keep your gifts for yourself and give your reward to someone else. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean, guys? <laughs> he already read and he already knew what it meant. He already wrote, because the writing, the letters were still on the wall. They were still there. Uh, so the hand that invisible, like uh, from nowhere came, just a hand, wrote it, and the words were still on the wall. Right, so nobody erased them. 
So when Daniel came in, he saw them, he knew exactly what it meant. And that's why he said, you may keep your gifts for yourself or give to somebody else. I don't, I don't want your gifts. Sometimes it's by revelation of God. God will tell us, do not touch those, um, those gifts or um, and says so like, you may take those gifts. I'm not sure if you, uh, I say, we're we going to do some um, Bible study in that as well. But it was uh, one point, uh, the prophet Elisha, Elisha um, that he was cured. He cured one of the, uh, like a nobles or it was probably even a king from leprosy. And he didn't want to take no, no gifts from him. But his servant went behind his back and took the gifts. But he knew not to take. For some, some reason, they, you know it's, it's um, revealed by God either to take it or not to take it. But since he knew the answer of the, um, of the writing of the hand, he knew what it was. He either take it or not take it. Maybe he would not, um, he may not even need it. Anyway, so it says, nevertheless, I will read the writing for the king and tell him what it means. All right, so we are in chapter, so he's he's like, king, I don't need to, to be awarded, nothing like that, reward. Um, I don't need anything from you. So he saw like how low he fell. Um, he, tells, he tells the king all what happened, his father and everything, like your majesty, the most high God um, gave your father Nebuchadnezzar sovereignty and greatness and glory and splendor, like the God of Israel, okay? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but but to point it more, it tells that what happened with his father and how his father was, um, um, that his heart was became arrogant and hardened with pride. He was deposited from his royal throne and stripped of his glory for seven years. And it tells what happened. But you, Belshazzar, his son, have not humbled yourself through though you knew all this. We are in, in, chapter, in uh, verse 22. You knew all this. Instead, you got all the, from the um, temple of God, all the vessels out where it will be sacred. And, and you praise the God of the stones, bronze and all that which I, I highlighted here, which cannot see or hear or understand. Like you go to the woods and uh, praise them, um, the stones praise them and other things except the real God. And the hand came from above, from God. And this is what it says. Mene, mene, tekel parsin. So the translation is, here's what the words means. Mene means God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. Um, because for what he did, I say, you know, when he felt the fear and all that, a sentence came over his head. Tekel means you have been weighted on the scales and found one thing. And what it means? God sometimes, uh, I guess, time to time, I probably once a year, he waits and kind of see where the person is at. It's not necessarily on the scale, but on, but, but the expression is to to be um, miss, missing the weights on the scale, like you don't have enough. And um, it's an expression. So he says you're weighted heavy. In God's eyes, you are valuable. But this fellow, he was not. He'll be waiting and found the one thing. So he's not, nothing that... Uh, uh, he knew and supposed to do to follow what his father, you know, after he found God to do exactly what his father was doing. He did nothing like that. 
Perez, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. So, um, wow. So it tells us that his kingdom is going to be divided and we're taking away from him. Why? Because God um, is not going to deal with him no more. He went just way too far. Um, then uh, Belshazzar commands, then he was clothed in purple, a gold chain was placed around his neck. That is like to know who he is. And placing a third in the command of the king in the kingdom. But, but in that very night, in that very night, king of the Babylonians, the king of the Babylonians, this is king of the Babylonians, was slain. And there is, I, had, I underline the Mede, exactly what says Medes and Persians, took over the kingdom at the age of 62. Wow. All righty. So that hand that appears from nowhere is a sentence as well. Um, so what we can take us from this story? Um, I would say uh, first, I know, we hear from your parents who God is and you don't turn to God after knowing that what had been through his father, Nebuchadnezzar, still didn't turn to God, and he's not just doing much worse. Um, and God wasn't pleased with him at all. And he's like, he had enough. He had to come with his own hand and write on the wall. Imagine, guys, how bad he was. And arrogance and pride. God cannot stand that. Instead of turning and being humble and um, keep going with his, uh, you know, with the kingdom and all that, because nobody will take it from him, but God gives and takes as he pleases. And I, we can see in that very night, um, he was clean, killed. And the kingdom was divided as Daniel explained that the dream that was with the statue, from there it divided in two, and from there divided, you know, so it keep dividing till it ends up um, all the way down to the feet, and then gets the hand of God. It doesn't say the hand is a stone came from nowhere and crushed everything. But, so we are still going um, in this teaching, so we'll keep, so we, we completed the chapter five in the book of Daniel. And I, I say, I hope well, you take something with you from here. It's not an excuse, like God doesn't have to come um, just for you, personally for you to tell you, because you already told, like told to his previous, like to his father. So you have to come specific for him, like I'm God of Israel, you know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you should, you know, know you witness your father, your father, what happened to your father, and how he became, he, he came uh, back to God, and how strong he was, much stronger afterwards, but he didn't learn no lessons. So stumble, um, and um, he was much worse. So, wow. Well, I guess you, you guys, you should, uh, I says, be humble and um, do not touch what you don't know, what the, what is uh, what is precious in God's eyes. It cannot be like necessary gold and silver and those vessels. Something that is tre uh, got treasures, do not touch it. I, I guess you should actually treasure those as well, like God's people. Um, uh, Jewish people, pray for them. So I hope you learned something from this uh, Bible study. Till next time I am um, able to um, talk to you, I say goodbye. Goodbye now.